And so just a little bit of background, uh, just to give you some context as to how we uh, got here. Uh, we have been really on this journey to address our housing shortages here in Memphis for a very long time. And so it really started off with uh, Memphis 3.0, I think it was in 2019 that the city did its first comprehensive plan. And that is really a land use uh, plan and identify what and how we're going to be using our land here in Memphis over the next 20 years or so. You probably are aware that they are currently updating the plan. And so from the Memphis area plan, several uh, small area plans came out of that and now they are updating uh, that plan as we speak. And then next, it was our Accelerate Memphis. I think this was around 2020 or so under the Strickland's administration. Uh, we did several catalytic projects around, I mean, several initiatives, catalytic community initiatives around the city. Of course, housing, uh, our housing strategy is a part of that. And so what we are doing now is we are, uh, we are adding uh, housing as a component to our, our catalytic community initiatives. So we are sitting right now in historic Barrows High School. Uh, we just did, I think it was earlier this year, did the grand opening for this beautiful space that we're in. A building was blighted for over 40 years. And so we are now have repurposed it and reimagined it. And this is one of our catalytic community initiatives. So from that, we are building housing initiatives around it. You'll see that went on all around the city, uh, around our various projects, whether it's our Raleigh Town Center or Southwest Train Drive and at least one in White Haven. So we are trying to be very strategic in how we are doing uh, community development as, as, in, a, in a comprehensive way, and everything is being leveraged and building off of the other. And then our, our last plan I'd like to highlight today is our Joint Memphis and Shelby County Housing Plan. And this is a plan that we did, I think, about a year or a year and a half, two ago. And uh, we added, we have four recommendations. Those re re recommendations are, um, yeah, this one's there. Uh, we have to improve our housing quality, to support home ownership, to diversify our housing stock, and to increase the quality of low-income housing. This initiative, our middle income uh, pilot, uh, is it would end the number three to diversify our housing stock. And the purpose of that is really, you know, we spend so much of our time in housing and community development focusing on affordable housing. However, we understand that there is a need for housing of all types, for all levels of income throughout the city. And so this initiative specifically is uh, how we are uh, implementing our third recommendation. And so I will have Amanda O'Meara, uh, our HCD planning coordinator, to come to speak with you uh, about our program overview and goals and move more into the program aspects. And because she's the person who's currently implementing this program for the city and overseeing the program. Thank so, you. the Memphis Civil Income Housing Pilot Program, like we said, um, came out of our desire um, from the Joint Housing Policy Plan to diversify the housing stock. So, that's focused on uh, middle income housing as well as have more types of housing. So, traditionally, we have a lot of single family housing in the city and a lot of large multi family yeah. apartment buildings. There's not a lot in between those things. So, that's what this program focuses on. Um, so the middle income housing pilot program, we're calling it MI Pilot, because that's a mouthful, um, promotes infill development of missing middle housing affordable to middle income households. And the goal of this program is to support local nonprofit and for profit developers to fill this gap um, through construction and rehabilitation of these housing units. Um, further goals are to repair housing stock, like we said, develop attainable owner occupied energy units. Increase local developer capacity and then reduce flights for an additional uh, unit development. So, we're going to define some of these terms. Um, missing middle housing is two to six unit structures. So, that can be duplexes, townhomes, triplexes, quads, 
Um, in Memphis, we have something in our loving boat called a large home, and that's like a larger house that's split into three or four or six units. So all of those are eligible housing types under this program. Um, we've also added sing certain kinds of single family as an eligible housing type. We recognize that depending on the neighborhood you're going into, um, you might not be able to put the, that two to six unit house. Um, so the eligible types of single family are small single family or how it's described in the development code as a cottage home on lots of less than 45 foot width. Um, the reason for this caveat is because uh, 45 foot and larger is the, the size of a lot for a conventional single family home and we're not trying to um, fund conventional single family that can usually fund on its own in the same form. And then also um, multiple small single family homes on a larger lot, which is traditionally known as a cottage fort. So this is kind of, uh, these are non-local examples to give you a, like what we kind of be looking at. So this, this is an example of a cottage fort. This is uh, a duplex and then here's some houses. Mm -hmm. Further definitions. Um, so, a lot of you might be familiar with affordable housing. So affordable housing is traditionally um, households earning less than 80% of the area median income. This program focuses on attainable housing, which is the new term we're using for 80 to 120% AMI households. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, HUD definitions of AMI, for a household of four, that's $68 to $102,000 as an annual income. And then affordable housing means that a household is spending no more than 30% of their monthly income on their housing when they move rent and use um, So for this program, we've outlined affordable sale prices and affordable rent ranges um, so that you don't have to get into the actual layer necessarily of each household's income. If you're developing within these price ranges, then you would be meeting the income requirements. So this is a pilot program. So we are testing a concept and then ideally if it goes well, we'll find additional money sources to keep it going. So um, initially we have $1 million. Um, the minimum award for funding of a project is 50,000. The maximum award is 500,000, capped at 50,000 per year. So if you have a very large development, you can apply for that funding, but a max of 50,000 for each unit at development. Um, funding will be in the form of a 50% grant and a 50% loan. The loan will be administered through HD and it will be paid back with a 3% interest rate. So it's a lot lower than what you could get out of like a bank or private financing. Um, affordability monitoring. Um, if you're doing rental, you'll submit your rent rolls annually to our compliance department as long as you're still within those ranges. You're good to go. Um, additionally, rent is not allowed to increase more than 3% annually because we do want to preserve affordability long term. And then if you're doing for sale, there will be a restrictive covenant to enforce that long term affordability based on the amount of funding that you bought. Um, so our affordability period for rehab and conversion is going to be 5 to 15 years just depending on how much money we bought per unit. And then for new construction, it's 20 years regardless of that. <laughs> Eligibility, um, both nonprofit and for profit developers are eligible to apply, which is awesome. Previously, you know, a lot of our funding focus is on just nonprofit or partnerships. Um, so for profit developers <coughs> are able to apply in their own business mm -hmm. Um, eligible activities are new construction of vacant single family homes as described, new construction of vacant two to six unit multifamily units, and then uh, rehabilitation or conversion of vacant multifamily. So that would be if you were to like acquire a single family home and then turn it into a multifamily home or acquire and add on to something to make it multiple units. Um, projects must have a minimum of four units to be eligible for funding. Those can be split across multiple lots. If you're going to do like two townhomes on one lot, two townhomes on another, it can be like that. Um, and then all sites must be within three miles of each other. So we are kind of focused on infill building up density. We're going to do questions at the end. 
Um, and then we also have created a map of our Nurture and Accelerate majors, which are areas identified in the 3.0 comprehension plan um, that really focus on building up density around certain areas. We have a link to a map where you can type in the address to your project. If it's within a half mile zone of one of those anchored areas, you'll get bonus points on your application. Um, additionally, applicants have to have site control and construction. You need to move into construction within 240 days. And lastly, we have a, a minimum MWDE requirement of 25%. There are bonuses if you um, commit to higher percentages. Application components. So it's really broken out into two main categories. So for agency and organizational information, you'll need to describe your development team, upload, um, I think, proof of development history and resumes of your team. And then an agency budget. So you'll need a three-year agency budget, current, previous year, and then next year. And then for your project, um, a budget narrative needs to like your sources and uses and a performa. And then any other funding commitments that you have, you have to upload through those other <laughs> funding staff. And then your project narrative, which includes um, a neighborhood market instruction. So just understanding, we want to know that you understand the market that you're building in, um, what assets are nearby, what the housing market is, how you think you'll be able to sell or rent for the price that you're looking at. And then an introductory site plan. So this does not have to be an official site plan where you hire someone, but we want to know that you have an idea of what you're doing and you know the existing site conditions. Of. This is just a picture of essentially what I found on the previous page. This is what the required documents checklist looks like, all the things that you'll upload with your application. The application goes live. Well, it went up at 2 o'clock, so it is live when you walk out of here. And then the budget worksheets are templates that we've already created with all the formulas and then you'll just download them, fill them out, and then upload them back up. So this is just a picture of the agency and product worksheet. And then the actual performa. And then Evan is going to go over the scoring models. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon once again. And for those that came uh, when we are registered, we have our sign up sheet. And if you register, the names should be on the sheet. Just highlight and if it's not included, it needs to include the names of the sign up sheet. What to ensure that we know those that are in the attendance. So, like uh, Amanda said, you know, we have this. The uh, presentation is going to be available tomorrow, but the application is already live on our website. So once you step out after this presentation, you can just go to our website and see everything that is required here. So I'll be talking about our scoring and the process going forward. Applications will be reviewed and scored by our review committee. So we have a set of committee that will be reviewing every single application that we receive. And the minimum score for funding is 100. Okay? So part of the various requirements that will be set as a group that just like Amanda showed earlier on. And the minimum threshold criteria we are required to have in our court. So all of those will be, just like she has showed you in terms of the performer, site and all of those information. So our minimum criteria there is a high point, as well as site control, it's also going to be required to project readiness. Our expectation is that we don't just want to have the wedding and then you kind of see how we want to be able to move as quickly as possible. So we want to know how ready the project is. Development team capacity as well will also have um, scoring on that, as well as the visibility and funding. We want to be able to see what else, what other uh, avenue of funding we have. And then affordability terms, just like another show was in the previous slide, and we want to also have an understanding of that. So all of these are what will determine the points that you will get. And please take note, applications with an incomplete agency or project budget, 
and all performer will be denied. So please take note of that. And I'm sure for you all to be here this afternoon, you want to receive this funding. So make sure you go back to ensure that whatever is needed, if needed. All right, and then for the bonuses, remember she also talked about that. I will the opportunity for bonuses as well. So, for example, if you are able to provide for more opportunities for him, the participation, the minimum is for percent But if you are able to go further, higher than between 30 and 40 percent, that will be extra bonus point for you. Alignment with the anchor strategy, just like she said, you can check on our um, the map there to see if it's within our anchor areas. Or, or as well as proximity to other uh, big city projects as well, will also afford you extra bonuses. Energy efficiency, you all know how important that is when it comes to project development. So it will also attract extra bonuses if you are able to talk about how energy efficient your projects is going to be. The same thing with the universal design and the stability. That is also an important component that will attract a bonus of your application as well as community connectivity, particularly for those that are designing multi-use, um, mixed-use development. How close is it to the transportation? How close is it to the public facilities and things like that? All of these will um, attract bonus points to all of your applications. Like I said, there will be a review committee. So once you have completed your application and submitted, complete, completion, completeness, and eligibility reviews will be done by the program staff. You know, the mother herself will go through thoroughly to make sure that everything that we have required is intact. In and then after that, there will be the application review as well as the scoring of the application, which will be done by the industry experts committee. So we have a combination of people that will need to ensure that everything is thorough and complete. Then we'll have a notification. Our expectation is within 30 to 45 days of the application, we'll receive either a word approval or denial letters. So but our hope is that everyone will be happy. How we will have the opportunity to be awarded this um, opportunity. Now, how do we apply? Just like we said, once the application is already live, so we said that the email will come live on this website on Tuesday, that's today at 2 p.m. So if you can even put it on your phones right now, you go to our website, you'll see it there. And how do you get that on our website, memphistl.gov slash developers? You wait and scroll down, you'll see the NY panel program. That is where you find the application. So it's called Open Middle Income Housing Panels tab. And then you click on the link to fill out the application. We have made it as easy as possible. Once you've got the link, this is the page that pops up. And then you'll be able to download the program outlines, you download also the checklist. And since it's a double sign, you'll be able to. I'm going ahead and so right now. So, <laughs> download and review the program guidelines and require the payment. So, once you get to that tab, that's how the steps you should follow. Make sure you download it. So, just kind of say, I'll come back to it. It's important to download to keep it with and go back to review. And then, check is located on the city of web, uh, it's city's website prior to starting your application. Please, please, and that's very much important. We all know how our brains work, right? But once you download it, you keep it, and then you can easily go back to review to ensure that you understand what is required, that it's easy for you to start your application process. And then application is through double sign. Okay? So you will be prompted to enter your name and email once you start the application process. And then there will be an access code that will be sent to your email to enter before we proceed. Then click finish later to save the application as a draft until you are ready to submit. That is also very important, please. Once you go start your application, of course, you can't finish at that point. So just click finish later so I can easily go back to it and carry on with your application. And if additional people, if you need to add an additional people to the work on the application, 
clean assigned to someone else. You know, you all are working with, together with some other team members and you feel that they will be needed in this process. So there will be an option for you to add that person so that the, the individual will be able to have access to the application as well. Okay, you will need to provide them in the access code. So whoever you are adding to, whatever access code you receive at the first time, you send it to the individual so the person will to have access to the application. And then review your application for completion and ensure all documents have been uploaded and the required documents checklist, just as I showed you in the share. Uh, prior to submitting your final application. We cannot overemphasize this. You know, sometimes our brains go faster than our mind. You might have thought that, oh yes, I submitted, it's fine. No, make sure you go back to check for every document to be complete. Because even though you have a computer on your computer, but if you don't remember to upload it here, unfortunately, that will be a denial. We don't want that for anyone. Here. So please make sure that you go through and once everything is uploaded, then you can hit your final submission. And then afterward, print a copy of your application from your own records. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of our presentation.